Hello, I'm Desert Green 90 here, here with a brand new review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 13th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver from Doctor Who Series 11 and Series 12, and pretty soon Season 13. Um, that is, if we're even going to see this screwdriver in the next installment, alongside the TARDIS, because apparently Jodie Whittaker and both the TARDIS are leaving after this next series. Which is kind of a bummer. Oh well. Let's just get this puppy open so we can start the review. Alright. Let's just get the good old box cutter out. And uh, don't try any of this stuff at home, kids, because you'll cut yourself like I have before with my original red one. If you remember that one at all from my last few times I did an unboxing. And hey, why is this so hard to open? One hour later. Hold on. Okay, I almost got it. It's just, it just needs a little bit of force. Just, I'm not ripping it because even though that uh, I don't like keeping the boxes, it's still a shame to rip things. Okay, apparently there's an object shit tape that I missed on the very bottom, so uh, let's just cut that open then. Okay, what the hell? Two hours later. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Why is this so hard to open? Okay, so upon further inspection, it turns out that the box is nothing but a cover, and apparently the only way to get the sonic screwdriver out is actually through the front. So why the hell is the box so complicated to open, only for it to house just the manual? That is some bullshit, bullshit. right there. <sighs> anyway, let's take a look at the model up close since it's out. The model itself is done in some nice metallic silver with some uh, dry brushing black effects around the sides, as well as some transparent plastic to represent the light up feature. Now, apparently in canon, how the 13th Doctor got her Sonic was that she used some spoons and melted them down and basically casted them around the same wiring of her last Sonic, because in canon, all the Sonics are the same. And honestly, it's a nice fit, it's a definitely a decent size to have, but for some strange reason, um, apparently the handle can turn certain degrees? I mean, it always says it could turn 180, but I don't understand what the point of this is. I mean, if it's something in canon, I mean, I'm not, not too sure. But at any rate, you get two activation buttons on the bottom. One is to activate the generic sonic sound, and the other one is just to activate a brand new sound that's in the TV series. Um, it lights up pretty well from both the main top part as well as to the bottom handle. Aside from the light-up feature and the sound, all it has is just a pull tab, now no on-off switch is kind of what you're expecting for a $5 toy, but there was something that I did notice um, when I was settling around with it and taking a quick look at the actual instructions, and that is the top crystal part of the actual Sonic. It's supposed to turn as well as um, it lights up, and let me just get the instruction manual real for you real quick because um, it says here that the crystal will light up with the um, secondary feature at the very bottom. It says here that the button activates the rotating uh, light up crystal, and throughout the time that I've been playing with it, as of this recording at least, um, I haven't found a, way, found a way for it to rotate at all. I've been pressing the button, I've pressing both buttons, I'm holding down the button. Like, there's just no way the thing's gonna rotate. I don't know if that's like a problem with other 13 Sonics with this specific feature. It's kind of annoying if it came defective, but what do you expect from an open bubble package? Uh, hey, this is Ghost Green actually uh, in the future. So apparently the tip that I had was actually like stiff or something. So uh, I twisted it manually and when I hit the button now, it actually lights up and spins the way it's supposed to. So that's fine by me. But yeah, not bad though from a first Sonic. So back to our already scheduled transmission. Aside from all those complications though that I do have with it, it's definitely a nice little small collector's piece. I don't have any of the other Dr. Sonics because, oh yeah, that's right. All of them are hell of expensive except for probably the classic Dr. Sonics. But other than that though, this is a really nice um, little uh, I mean, little train kit. I mean, it's definitely not the best Sonic screwdriver. I mean, will I pick up more? I mean, I'm hoping to, to expand my uh, collection a little bit, because this is a really nice prop. It's definitely a nice 
little decent size to swipe from the two sound effects, and I'm pretty sure somebody will get a kick out of the spinning crystal gimmick. But other than that, though, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. So if you guys liked it, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next. Stay, start, sit, and then I see you, so you need.